welcome to Woodshop 101, a woodworking audio podcast geared toward the hobby weekend woodworker. Your hosts for the show are Jeremy Crawford and Drew Shore. Join these two different craftsmen for a lighthearted banter about everything woodworking, online education, and how they produce content. Topics could include the latest news, tips, tricks, and designs to include furniture, crafts, and shop projects. Welcome to episode number 33. Today we're going to talk about which woodworking path we take whether it be the simple path or the complex path. We are joined tonight for a repeat visit from Sam Raimondi, the DIY Huntress. What's going on, Sam? Not much. Glad you guys weren't sick of me yet from the last podcast. Hey. Happy to be back. I mean, look, it's you're setting records. Setting records, that's all that <laughs> well, matters. We had to take some ibuprofen and stuff just to get over the last time. But, you know, we, we finally got over it and we're good. <laughs> I mean, that's no different than the Tums I take every time I, I get on here with Drew, so. Uh. <laughs> Is that a Five Guys cup right there? No, 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 no. That's a Del Rancho. Oh, well, it looks like a Five Guys cup. I'm drinking coffee. Is it too late for coffee? Me too, Starbucks. Never too late for coffee. Mine's like the corner store down, <laughs> down there. That's 75 cents for a cup. I'm in New York. There's a Starbucks in every corner, so. Look, I don't know what part of New York, but where I was at, there was no Starbucks. It was corner stores. <laughs> it. Apparently, you were in the wrong part of New York. No, I was in the good part because literally for like a year and a half, the same corner store we'd go get breakfast, lunch, got me hooked on seven monsters a day. <laughs> and after like a year, a year and a half, like I, I had to quit cold turkey and I had the shakes from like drinking that many monsters. That's the worst part about living in New York is you have the corner stores and they're so convenient for everything. That's why they're so called easy. convenience stores. Oh no, they're, they're <laughs> corner stores there. No, it's. I don't. I can't. T- I don't even know where there was the Starbucks at when I lived there. It doesn't matter because this this one cup of coffee co- is like half of what I make in a year. So. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> you don't drink it. <laughs> <laughs> that that cup's actually been sitting on her desk for about six months. She <laughs> sips it. Stop giving away my secrets. <laughs> Put it in the microwave. Heat it up again later. <laughs> well, look, hey, I bought a Starbucks cup, one of their dollar plastic cups, and I could refill it. And I'm like, yeah, I went to Starbucks today. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, so my coffee pot broke, I think, right after I got back in town from Christmas. So about three months, I haven't had a coffee pot. So I go to the corner store and spend 75 cents on a cup of coffee. Yeah, after 75 about, cents is, that's doable. I, I quit coffee, though, for an entire year. I stopped drinking it. Uh, cause I was drinking like four cups a day and I was like, I don't think this is good for me. And so I quit for a whole year and now that I'm drinking coffee again, I'm like, why did I ever quit for a year? That was like the worst year ever. Well, I had a Keurig and I was like, all right, I don't, I don't want to buy another one because the one I had, and I don't know if they're still like this, but the internal tank, you couldn't drain once it was primed. You couldn't ever drain it. Mm-hmm. Well, then when I move, the movers won't take it cause they won't take anything that has liquid in it. So then it's up to me to move it, but then it spills everywhere. So I was like, I'm just not going to buy another one. I was like, I'll buy one once I move, and I don't have to worry about it. And I was like, you know, I'll just I'll survive it on coffee when I go to work. At home, I won't worry about it. And now I'm like three months into it, and I'm like, nah, I'm, I'm going to the corner store every morning when I get up. And I'm like, 75 cents after like 100 cups, 100 visits. I've could, I, I could have easily gone and bought me another Keurig, like – just, just don't do the math. Like it isn't worth it to do the math. No. You start feeling bad about how much money you spend on coffee, and coffee's way too important for that. Exactly. So oh, right. coffee's the luxury. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about what's going on in the shop, Drew. What's uh? What do you got going on right there? I want to uh, see. Actually, I got to see. What? It's, is it right there on the table? Let me see it. Yeah, it is. Uh, I had to bring it over, but it's the half lap picture frame. I'm finishing up on it tonight i just got lacquer on it today and some of last night but uh i basically showed that technique on how to make the half laps only this time i added a little bit of uh, something extra on where you don't have to measure at all there is no calipers there's no height gauges there's nothing it's it is completely 100 percent no measuring that looks complex why would you decide to do that <laughs> because <laughs> he's a complex woodworker <laughs> no that actually looks pretty good i i totally when you were talking about frames for the last like month that is not what i had in mind <laughs> like i don't know what what i had in mind but that wasn't it when i saw it, i was like man that actually looks really good 
Say, yeah, go, I've made it before, though. What's that? I've made it before, though. This this half lap joint. Uh, I actually made a picture frame from one of my daughter's pictures uh, after she got out of uh, school last year, and um, I ended up making one and, and featured the half lap technique. Only I've, I kind of perfected it a little bit since then. But uh, it's funny, though. I mean, the videos that I shot last year, nobody knows about. <laughs> so well, look, it, it better and, be simple because. I'm actually going to do half laps on an upcoming project. Oh yeah, that the technique that I that I uh, have been using to make half laps, and it doesn't matter what I'm doing it on, different thicknesses or different uh, widths. I mean, it it works every time, and and it's super super simple. Yeah, that's for somebody that's got a, a sled. I'm going to try to do it with my miter gauge and my fence. Do you have two miter gauges? No, I do. But believe it or not, the one that came with my saw is way too loose in the miter gauge or in the miter slot. Like you put it in and it wiggles way too much in that slot. Never will be accurate. You could probably still get away with it though because what I do is I bridge the two with a uh, piece of wood and screw them in together. Mm. So it's kind of like a cross-cut sled in itself. Yay. I like that. Yeah, because it literally has been useless. <laughs> like when I, I first used it, I was like, just trash this. <laughs> I went. I went to Craig and I bought their my, their precision miter gauge, and it's been a lifesaver. Yeah, I did the little two the two miter gauges screwed together with a bridge at Rockler, and uh, one of the guys that works there came up and he said, "Whose idea was it to do that?" And I said, "That's mine. I've been doing that when I didn't have a crosscut sled handy." And he's like, "I don't know why I didn't think of that. I, <laughs> I was sitting over here hitting my head, just going duh." It's <laughs> just yo, that is so. pretty genius. And I yeah I do have two. Hopefully it'll work. Yeah, I've really thought about like breaking the aluminum bar off of it and just putting a new bar on there. Hey, uh, Rockler makes a good bar. <laughs> hey, call Rockler and tell him to send me one. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm actually gonna miss like that was one of the first things when I decided I was moving. Like I was like, all right, I got a Rockler store 20 minutes from me. Let me see if I got one where I'm moving. No Rockler, no Woodcraft. I don't know how, like, I literally, I get in the car in 20 minutes, I'll be at Rockler or Woodcraft, and I don't know what I'm going to do now. I mean, I guess well, not spend near as much money. I, yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have one near me, so I, the closest one is Arlington, where we went uh, oh, a while back, where April and I went. But yeah, uh, I've got a Woodcraft, but that would be a faux pas for me to walk into a Woodcraft now, so. Hey, but they do sell some different things. Yeah, yeah. But no, but I'm, I, I'm affiliated. There's there's way more, like to me, there's more stuff at at Rockler. But our woodcraft carries more like hardwood. Um, They're just really proud of it. Yeah, I uh, I t I try not to go to either because that would involve me going to Houston, and I don't like to deal with the people up in Houston. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I order all my stuff. And then I'm like, well, crap, what I spent in shipping, I could have just drove up there, taking the time. <laughs> <laughs> so, What about you, Sam? What you got going on? <clears throat> well, um, I just finished my desk build, so I uh, uploaded that today, which was cool. So right now I don't really have anything going on, which is like so crazy to say because I always have something going on. Um, but what I do have coming up is I'm doing a kind of like a DIY swap with another blogger. I'll be announcing it pretty soon. But we uh, sent each other some surprise items and have challenged ourselves to uh, make something cool out of the surprise box. So it should be kind of cool. I'm really excited for that. And uh, I have no idea what I'm going to do yet, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, I'll figure it out. <laughs> so you have no idea what she's sending you? Well, I just got her box. And she oh, sent you just me did? Some okay. She sent me some pretty cool stuff, definitely stuff I've never worked with before. Um, I don't know if she got my box yet, and I'm uh, I'm kind of scared because <laughs> I sent her a lot of weird stuff. So, <laughs> so I hope Drew, I'm going to send you a surprise box. She's able to make something cool out of it, but I'm sure she will. She's really creative. <laughs> I'm, oh, I'm going to send you a surprise box, Drew. Uh, I well, it better be for woodworking. I don't. I don't want to see anything uh, else. Hey, whatever it is, you got to include <laughs> on your channel. That's, that's all that matters. <laughs> Have a woodshop one hundred and one surprise challenge. Yeah, like uh, like I, I'm pretty sure we got to hit explicit on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Little kids can't watch that. Yeah. This is rated R. So yeah, um, 
I've been working on the memory box for Bruso. Um, and I, like I was telling y'all earlier, like I'm only maybe, maybe a quarter of the way done. And I spent all day Sunday recording it. And I, I decided to go with some character maple. And if you know anything about character maple, it's got a lot of like mineral streaks in it. There's um, generally a lot more knots, things like that. And so there's a lot of things I ended up having to fill with epoxy. And then I was like, well, ah, man, that's a great video. So I started shooting a second video while shooting the first video. And by, by the time this project is done, there will be three videos coming out of the one. Um, <laughs> and there will be, so there'll be the actual box build. And then there's going to be a uh, clip taken out of that. That's going to be like a concentration, more in depth on how to fill a knot with epoxy. Um, and then I'm thinking that I'm going to do like a, an epoxy inlay on the lid. Um, and if I do that, that will be a completely separate video um, because that alone will probably be, you know, at least a 10 to 15 minute video just on doing the inlay. Because I think how I do it, I'm, I'm not going to do router based. I'm going to do it all, all by hand, chisel and router plane. I'm thinking. That's... I think the epoxy video is going to be cool because there's like this whole thing. I don't know if you guys have seen on Instagram where people are doing like the live edge wood and like joining with like an epoxy river in the middle. Mm-hmm. And it's like, mm-hmm. there's a lot of cool stuff you could do with epoxy and wood. So like, I'm really interested. I can't wait for that video to come up. Like, hurry up, let's go. Yeah. In fact, so <laughs> you forget who you're talking so, to. Yeah. <laughs> well, this one's, it, it's going to happen. Cause I, I mean, I'm waiting to get paid. It's got to get done to get paid. So, um, <laughs> It, in fact, so I'm going to, I'll be partnering with Transtent because the, um, inlay will be actually dyed epoxy. Um, and Transtent sent me, uh, their dye to, to dye it with. So I don't, I don't know yet. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a little intimidated by it, <laughs> I guess, cause I've not done a whole lot of inlay work and this is actually going to be inlaid on a finished piece. So if I mess up that, then I got to go back and like rethink entire strategy because I'm using every bit of the last character maple I have in my shop, and I'm not to to find character maple. Not many people keep on a regular basis, and in fact, I got my my stock from Rockwood probably six months ago or longer. So well, I'm going to forewarn you now that when you're done with it, it cannot repeat. Can not go in the recycle bin (laughs) no because i remember i remember this long drawn out process of a sofa table that i was just dying to see and the dude didn't even take pictures of it because he (laughs) threw it away yeah i told you look if if it doesn't turn out ain't nobody gonna see it if i don't (laughs) like it nobody's gonna see it which i could have i mean i mean it's that's rabbit hole to always get down but like i can no project's too far that you can't fix it but I just had too much invested, and I was tired of it. I had that. I had no motivation to fix it, and so cut my losses with it. Let me don't. I don't want to burn out on that one project. I want to go and and get into something that I've been wanting to get into. Well, like, a, me, di- like a dining room table. <laughs> I think I've now convinced myself to move the unfinished dining room table, so I can finish it for my first project when I move. So we'll actually have a real dining room table. Um, you know, I just hear I just hear words <laughs> right now. Just words. <laughs> I know. It's, look, at least it sounds I'm like you actually, two have trust issues. I don't know. I feel like I'm a third wheel right now. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> well, if you go back to the first episode, February third of two thousand and fifteen, I will have talked about starting this, uh. <laughs> Both the sofa table and the dining room table. So our very first episode, and here we that are, our, episode thirty-three, a a little over a year old, and I've yet to complete. Well, I completed one. It just <laughs> and it went to the garbage. Yeah, <laughs> and the other one's yet to be completed. Um, and I, but see, I, I've been back and forth because I've you know it's done a lot of work, put a lot of work into that table base, but I didn't want to move an unfinished project. So then I was like, all right, well, I'll try to finish it before I move it. Well, then the chances of it being damaged once I get it from the, from the movers is, I'm going to say about 99%, it's going to be damaged. 
So why damage a finish table? At least if I move the half finish table, it's easier to repair. Okay, wait, so we're on episode 33. Yeah. Episode 33. The dining so room table I'm is gonna, going... We should place bets. We should have like a listener bet. Where like we have like a pool of people and they bet what episode you're going to say you finished. <laughs> I don't know. I, I can tell you time frames. Oh, I love it. I love by, it. By January 1 of 2017, the dining room table will be complete. Okay. I say by March of 2017. That's a year from today. And if I win, you better send me something freaking cool because... <laughs> Okay. Because um, I know I'm right. <laughs> it'll be a surprise box. Drew, what a... What, uh, <laughs> yeah, it'll be a surprise box. Surprise box. Okay, so what's your, what's your prediction? Um, Don't predict before August because <laughs> it won't happen. <laughs> I say Christmas time. Okay, so you're saying it'll actually be done before I'm saying it will be done. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb and I'm going to say Christmas time. <laughs> I'm, and... I'm, uh, and this is just me showing faith that I have no idea why, because you haven't proved anything to me. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to go out on a limb and say Christmas time or New Year's. New I'm, Year's at the latest. I'm hoping Christmas time, because I going into a new job, I don't think I'll be able to take vacation this year and come all the way back home and spend it uh, with family. So it'll be just me and the wife and kids. So hopefully she'll have a dining room table. By the way... The one thing I forgot to leave out, Sam, is this was my wife's birthday present from November of 2015. <laughs> that just dawned on me. That just dawned on me. This poor woman. <laughs> yeah. He this, never gave her a timeline. He just said, yeah. we'll do it. That, that's true. And He's it like, started. I'm giving you a birthday present, but I forgot to tell you it was like an asterisk, and it's going to be actually three years from now, so... <laughs> <laughs> got some conditions. Yeah, I still forgot that it was her birthday present until literally just now. <laughs> I hope she doesn't listen to these. I so hope she doesn't listen. I apologize for you if she's listening because <laughs> maybe, maybe it's on. good. Maybe, maybe it's good we got a, a female's point of view on here just to show how how really cruel and insensitive that was. <laughs> maybe I'd actually need to get it complete then. <laughs> so. You know. Your your stories kind of remind me. I'm going to tell this this real quick story, and then we'll start our topic. But my my dad told me this story. Said when he was in the army, uh, he was he was in a tent, and his watch stopped working. So he he got a harebrained idea that he was going to try and fix it. And this this is kind of revolving around your sofa table. But anyway, he sat down at a table, had a, had his light there so he could see, and he started taking this watch apart. And all the, the people that are in the tent started coming over and looking and was real intrigued by what he was doing because, you know, Dad, just, he never let on that he could fix watches. And he said he'd be working on it and then a spring would pop out. And he, he'd pay no attention to it. He'd just keep working. And then a gear would fly out over here and he'd keep working. And everybody was just really, really enthralled. And then by the time he had it all apart, all the pieces were ready to go so he could fix his watch and assemble it. He took his trash can, put it up next to the table in his arm, and scooted everything into the trash. <laughs> <laughs> Look, well, like, that's that's a man after my own heart, right there. He, he, decided, he said everybody in that tent was pissed. <laughs> yeah, everybody else had had time invested. So let me apologize yeah. to the listeners. You had your time invested in this sofa table that nobody <laughs> will ever see. <laughs> e- ever, ever. I mean, yeah, I mean, you'll see parts of it on Instagram and Facebook, but you'll never see it complete. He'll take pictures of the, the, the dumpster he put in. Yeah. Okay. You know what? When I go to work tomorrow, I'll do that. Because it's down by work. Like the before and after. You take a picture of like what it was before, but then the after is just the dumpster. <laughs> yeah. You're, oh, you're going to see a drink. picture of the dumpster floating out sometime this week. So you better stay tuned. Like, Give remember it all that fancy. big project I was working on? Here's a picture of it, dumpster. <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, well, uh, let's let's get into our topic, Drew. Well, um, the topic that uh, we are going into, this kind of happened uh, from a viewer of mine, and it was just inadvertent, and uh, nothing against what he asked me, um, but it really kind of st- kind of stuck with me, and it's mainly um, about the picture frame that I did, and it seemed like that seemed like a lot of work uh, for you to go through just to make what seems like a picture frame. 
and uh well let me stop you it doesn't seem like a picture frame it is a picture frame <laughs> well i'm like but that's a, <laughs> like that's a mighty <laughs> cool picture frame he didn't, he, did, he didn't know that it was a picture frame i don't guess but uh it, that's why he said what well, seemed like a picture frame but uh yeah it it, it kind of got me thinking that yeah i could go with the norm and make miter joints and put it together like any picture frame that you would find at uh, you know a framing store or Walmart or wherever, but uh, it, it it made me wonder what other people do. How what makes them decide to either go the normal route uh, or the road less traveled, and maybe think outside the box a little bit. And you're right, my picture frames that I made they're half lap joints. They actually have overhangs on either end. It's not the typical half lap, so it kind of has a little bit of style. Um, but it still holds a picture just the same as any other picture frame. But uh, I wanted to basically um, take my take my skills of a specific joint and kind of broaden it uh, and, and incorporate it in something that isn't the norm. Um, so the the topic is just <clears throat> what makes you decide to go the normal way or the extraordinary way. And does the project you do determine that specific path for you? And in, in my case, um, anytime I build something that is maybe something normal, like a picture frame, I tend to think in my head, what can I do differently to make this more stylish or to um, make the joints stronger? Um, something that'll, that'll kind of broaden my horizons a little bit and show somebody that you can think outside the box on even the simplest projects. Um, what about what about you guys? I mean, this is kind of my point of view, my perspective, my topic choice. But uh, is there something that you guys do that helps determine? Do you take just the normal way, just so you can get it done quickly, or do you want to take extra time and and go a different way? So, the first thing I thought when you started this topic just now was that for me, like it, it definitely depends on the project. Um, I mean, for the most part, I do more like basic woodworking stuff. I do, you know, the easy stuff. But part of that is because that's kind of what the audience for my blog likes. Um, there are a lot of beginning woodworkers who are just trying to get their feet wet a little bit and trying to really um, explore and, and not be intimidated by woodworking. So a lot of what I do is very basic. But at the same time, you know, like there are projects that – I definitely have tried where I try to get a little more creative because it just kind of adds that extra flair and that extra like handmade like beauty to it. Like there's just certain things that you, yeah, you can, you know, use a mitered edge on a frame or you can do it the way you did. And it just, yours is more unique than mine would be. Um, so I definitely, my thought right away is that it really depends on the project. What about you, Jeremy? I'm, I'm going to lean the same way. I mean, it really depends. Um, I try to go the more complex way and now that I'm moving more out of the realm of uh, customer based project because usually you know working working for a customer you don't make money on material you make money on time and if you make things extremely complex uh, and, and you can't and it's one of those things it's real hard to adequately adequately just uh, to put time to paper so it's it takes you you know it may may think this one thing this uh let's see a radius or a curve in your apron of a table uh, i think it might take me an extra 30 minutes but then it takes you an extra two hours because you gotta finesse it and everything <laughs> else you lose money that way so you tend to stick to the the basic um the quick and and that way you know, you're getting that project out, you're getting paid for it. I'm getting away from that. And now I'm doing, for the first time in a while, woodworking for me, for what I want. And that means I'm, I'm going to push the envelope a little bit. I'm going to go more complex on a lot of things because that's how I'm going to grow as a woodworker. That's how I'm going to gain new skills and be able to pass those skills down. Um, and, you know, so yeah, it's very project based kind of dependent, but I'm going to lean towards, I'm going to go to the more complex path 
if it's an option, if it's available, because that's how I'm going to grow as a woodworker. It's going to test new skills um, and gain experiences. So, so uh, to play devil's advocate for a sec, because so like I said, a lot of what I do is basic woodworking. Um, like it gets discouraging sometimes when people like to make comments about it, like same way they did for your project. Like, oh, that's a lot of work to go through for a picture frame or what looks like a picture frame. Um, but, <laughs> you know, like there are times where I'll build something and, and people will be like, well, you know, why didn't you use like a dovetail joint or why didn't you do something like more complex? And and the thing is, like, I don't I think that there are still creative ways that you can do like basic woodworking and still make it look like a, it it's looks great. And B you put a lot of work into it and see that it meant something to you. And, um, I mean, cause like not to take away from the people who, who use that, because I really think a lot of people do start with basic woodworking and the idea is like, yeah, you want to grow and learn and, and learn other ways to do things. But I still think that there are definitely ways that you can use basic techniques to make something look really awesome. Um, so yeah, like, you know, kind of, on both sides of the fence here. Like I love the look of doing things that are complex and yeah, they take more time and they're totally worth it when you're done. But at the same time, like basic projects, you know, they're done quicker, but they can still look really awesome and and make a big impact. I mean, like the desk I just built basic woodworking project, but you know, a lot of miter joints, a lot of pocket holes, a lot of, you know, really basic stuff. But the response that I got from it is overwhelming because it's those tiny details that you put in later that really help. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And, and uh, Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Man. I think, I think, you know, yeah, it's project based, but it's also personality based. Um, exactly. exactly. You know, like I love to do more complex things. And, and like I was telling you guys earlier, I just have this like mental picture of what I want this shadow box table to look like it when I'm done, just based of, off of other things I've seen from other pieces that I just kind of want to incorporate together to pull off one project. And it's going to be extremely complex. There's going to be a, a lot of curves. And when I say a lot of curves, it's going to be more curves than what I usually do. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, once that's done, Will I go into another complex project? Probably not because my personality style is I spent so long on this one project that like I just I need to do something basic, quick, just to help like renew what my, my that that passion for woodworking mm-hmm. so I can go into the next complex project with a fresh mind. Like, all right, I just finished something basic, just quick that like I don't have to do a lot of thinking about um it just kind of kind of frees my mind to to start thinking about that next complex project and in fact i've already planned what i'm going to do after this brusso uh, memory box build you know it's it's going to be a little more complex i'm gonna have uh some through some through tenons on it um you know i'm doing a lot more i'm doing some inlay you know so there's going to be some more complex areas in it and i've already planned out what that basic project's going to be like a one day quick video to record knock out that project and move on. Um, so I think it's very like personality based as well. Yeah. And, and Sam, don't, don't sell anything about what you do short. Uh, (laughs) just because you, you think it's simple because it's pocket hole stuff. Like you said, your bloggers love to see that Mm -hmm. or or blogging viewers or, or followers or whatever you want to call them. (laughs) <laughs> but they, the, yeah, there's this. I don't know what it is. It's it's her minions. All the awesome people who follow me. <laughs> <laughs> minions. I like the minions. It's, it's minions. Uh, but but yeah, it's it's projects like that that show them um, ways that they can do it the way you did it. But it also opens their mind to think, you know, okay, I know she did it this way, but is there something else that I can do to maybe hide this or accentuate that? Um, like even using pocket holes, I've been playing around in my mind instead of plugging them with the factory plugs. Uh, but instead of that, taking a straight router bit and running it over the hole at a very, very shallow depth mm. and then putting an inlay across those holes. I like it. Um, I mean, it's got to be real shallow because you might hit the screw head, but uh, there, there are many different ways to accentuate um, – any kind of woodworking, whether it be standard joinery like uh, butt joining or pocket holes, all the way up to advanced joinery like dovetails. 
Um, so it, it, it just kind of got me thinking that, you know, you could take something very, very standard and turn it into something a little bit more complex uh, and unique. Well, but, so... So this project that I just did, this desk build, was actually the first time that I made formal like woodworking plans with SketchUp. Um, and before that, like I never really used any sort of formal woodworking plan because the way that my step-by-step -step process was on the blog was like, okay, like step one was this, step two is this, step three was this. Oh, by the way, I did this in step three, but you have these options that you can do. And I would kind of like really open up my projects to other ideas and kind of open up like a new box for people who are reading it. Um, not that I have anything against formal woodworking plans. I think that for very visual people, they help and they're great. But I think sometimes too, like they're so stuck on paper that people like follow the plan step by step and then like, great, they spit out a desk that looks just like mine and, and that's awesome. And I'm glad that it worked. But I think also too, you know, like the beauty of being an instructional blogger or YouTuber or somebody who really shows the process is that you step by step are allowing people to to do exactly what you're talking about to like go ahead and be creative in their own way or add a different type of joint if they want to I mean I can't tell you how many projects I put up where I'll be like I just did this but if you want to use a router here if you want to use like a chisel here like go for it um but that's the thing is like there really there are so many options and there's so many ways to just like grow and learn and just try things in a different way and 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 saying that because uh, we've kind of grown into this topic here from what you just said, what I just said, and even some things that Jeremy said is that it, it's not the project anymore. Yeah. It is our imagination. What, I, what your imagination can come up with in the process of building something is, is basically what's going to determine the road you take. Mm -hmm. Do you have an, uh, an, uh, an imagination that takes you to boundaries that uh, you've never even been before, or do you just want to stay on the normal path and just continue doing what you've always done? Uh, but I really like the idea that you are showing uh, the options. You know, you can do it this way, but you have these options too that can take you in a different way to achieve the same result. Um, so yeah, I thought that was a really interesting topic. I don't, I don't know if there's any more you guys want to add to that, but. No, I mean it's it's a rabbit hole you can continue to go down, but I think at the end of the day, like it's it's something you can only decide for yourself um, when that time comes, and the normal is only defined by you. It's relative, mm -hmm. you know. Your normal is one way. My normal is a different way. You know, Mark Spagnuolo's normal is curves. He does curves and everything. Well, then you go to Dave Picciuto, and his is something completely different. You know, it, normal is only defined by your own personality and, and the path that you're going down. You know, if, if you're heavy into curves and you say, okay, everything I ever do is complex. Let me try to go back to basics. Let me do some, some basic pocket hole joinery. That is something completely different to you. You know, it's, it, it, it may be, it, you may view that as a more complex joint than, than something you're normally doing. So, so I guess there's just one... Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Sam. My attitude is it doesn't matter what you do. Just, just freaking build something. Just go out there and try. And, and it doesn't matter. Just make something. And who cares if it's complex or basic as long as it, it's a project that makes you happy. And that's what I was going to say. I was like, are you afraid <laughs> or not? I mean, just it, 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 that's what it boils down to. Do you want to take risks or not? I mean, like, honestly, at the end of the day, you know, if you're, if you're trying something, it's just a piece of wood. If you mess up, you try something else. You know what I mean? You just, it's all about just getting your hands dirty, experimenting, and you never know until you try. Yeah. It's kind of like cutting people's hair. You know, you screw up, it's going to grow back. <laughs> it's just hair. <laughs> yeah. But if any of you guys out there have a, uh, an insight on this particular topic, because like Jeremy said, it is a rabbit hole. We can go forever <laughs> on this. And as you just witnessed, we kind of grew into this topic as we went along. Uh, but if you guys have a, an opinion, an outlook, or just even a, a simple tip or trick about certain kinds of joinery that you would think is normal that you can improve upon, I mean, just leave those in the comments, show notes, wherever else that you're you're watching this or, or listening to it, and uh, that'll help give everyone else ideas as well about how they can take their woodworking to the next level. Yeah. All right. Well, we do have a little bit of kickback. Um, 
So it's a tell phone. me it's a voicemail. It is a voicemail. Woohoo! It is. So we'll play that and uh, see what they have to say. <clears throat> hey guys, my name is Donald LeBlanc, and I run the uh, blog and YouTube channel called Fun with Woodworking. Uh, I actually just finished your uh, latest episode. Thought that I would chime in on the blogging question. I actually started out blogging, and after a couple of years of doing that, I transitioned into making videos on YouTube. Filming and editing the videos are great fun, but once I started making them, my blog posts really slowed way down. I've been meaning to get back to writing posts on my projects for a while now, and listening to this episode inspired me to write one up tonight. Thanks for the podcast, and I look forward to the next one. That's I'm awesome. partying I, up here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm partying. That's like yeah. awesome. That's so exciting for me. Yeah, You know what? But he didn't include like a link to this post. So, Donald, to... like, didn't he just, he said he just wrote up a a uh, oh. blog post that night, right? Oh, we yeah. Never saw I, it. I don't Let's know see. if he had he sent made this it live or not. He sent this on the 16th. Please share it. Yes. So... If you if you're listening to this, send us a link to that blog and we'll share it out. Um, all right, are you looking it up? YouTube. Channel? I'm gonna see if I can find it. Yeah. Cold fun with woodworking. I think is fun. Fun with woodworking. Yeah, fun with woodworking dot com. And let's see if he's got a blog section here. See you guys. What we talked about last time, though, like that was my fear that doing YouTube would make the blog go to the wayside, but. I'm inspired now. He just inspired me. Yeah. I'm going to make sure my blog is A++ every time I post a video. So Yeah. He's got a he's got a web page. It's funwithwoodworking.com. Uh I haven't really gone in depth with uh his his site just to find his particular blog that he made. Whether or not he posted on this site or not, I'm not sure. Um but yeah, if if you're listening, just post it to us so we can uh read the blog that you got inspired to write. Yeah, yeah, and we can, and we'll definitely share it out. Um, we, I, we did receive another one just about five hours ago on Instagram um, from Lemon Grove Wood Gnome, and it said, uh, "I finally caught up, and must say I enjoyed your special guest Sam on this podcast." Oh, Sam, and I believe Peter, the Epoxy King, were my favorite guest personalities you've had on your show. Of course, I've enjoyed the rest of your special guests. As I'm a frequent watcher of their YouTube channels, I was thinking a nice topic uh, about in a future episode would be how often do you calibrate your woodworking machinery and what calibrating tools do you use? In one episode, I believe it was the Alabama woodworker who asked what a good tolerance level is for accuracy. I liked his question because I like to calibrate my machinery within five thousandths of an inch. Thanks for all you do, and I look forward to your next episode. So I told him, I, I shot him a message back and I told him I'd add that to our, our list here at the beginning of the show notes. Um, and, and we can probably do that on one of, on one of our quick shows. I don't know if that would be enough to talk about on a long show, but cause I, my, my answer is absolutely, I don't ever do it ever. <laughs> <laughs> Well, don't Ever. give it away. If we're going to do it on but, another show. But no, I mean, Cats they, out of the bag. I, no, I do t- some stuff, but um, so look look for that. Uh, Lemon Grove Wood, Wood Gnome. Yeah, Lemon Grove Wood Gnome. Um, we'll, we'll put that up and, and look here. Sam's back, breaking records. Here, breaking records. You know, I have to say, like, your, your guys' listeners are so warm and welcoming after uh, the, the episode that I did with you guys last week um i got so many people who like reached out to me on instagram and facebook just to be like hey i heard you on the podcast and i really enjoyed it and looking forward to more and it was just really nice so uh hey, thanks to all the listeners why are we getting those <laughs> yeah, our little love, yeah. i mean sorry not sorry <laughs> she's like uh. so no we've uh it i think we've had more interaction from our audience based off of the one episode with you than what we've had with <laughs> just about any of them. And we've had like long standing names like David Picciuto and Mark Spagnolo, like on the podcast. I mean Bob Clay, I think he's he has one of the largest YouTube channels, I think. Um and like they're not even a YouTuber. Here we go. And we're getting like more more feedback from you. 
breaking more records. What can that's, I say? That's it. <laughs> no, that's yeah, it. they're they're awesome, and and uh, just every single person you reached out was super nice. So it's really cool. It's really cool to know that like when you have a fan base that genuinely cares. Yeah. Well, if you guys want to have Sam on more often, <laughs> you ought to just you ought to just leave us some comments down below. I, I I would really like to know how many people that have listened to both the episodes she's been on really want her back more often. <laughs> Party! <Woo. laughs> you, sh- you should really go to Instagram and and leave us a message and uh, follow us over there. We we start an Instagram. Sh- sh- go over there. I'm just gonna make like a bunch of fake accounts and be like, "Bring Sam back." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure you're the one saying you don't have a lot of time. If you got time to make fake accounts, then you those pro- are her clients, dude. Those oh, are her yeah. clients. Oh, those are clients. <laughs> yeah, the, that's what they clients of loose quotes. I say I have clients for my other jobs, but I'm just pretending that they're clients for custom orders. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm. Y'all might as well smile because I'm taking a picture of you right now. Can I make a funny face? Sure, go ahead. It's going on Instagram. (laughs) (laughs) So so people know right now, like like we're recording. So, uh, all right, well, let's let's talk back about, dang, I can't even talk now. (laughs) Well, I'm out of coffee and... That scared you with my funny face. Four o'clock is coming so early. Like, (laughs) we hadn't even talked about this since... The last time we talked, four o'clock is ridiculous to get up to work out. So uh, tired. <laughs> I would never. I'm just saying, like, I'm telling you straight up, I would never wake up Look, that early to work out. It's not I, worth it. I had no idea going into this. Like, it, it's so early to get up, but the motivation to go, I, the first, so that first Monday I went, so two Mondays ago, there was like 40 people at 5 a.m. that showed up. And I, I'm talking like <laughs> all, God. like all skill levels. And like people in shape, not in shape, like just, it's the motive, like the motivation. I, I like, I can't even explain it. Like when I go tomorrow, like I'm actually looking forward now to go because it's just that motivation that of like seeing people there to care enough about themselves and other people to, to get out there and just work out. Also, it'll be a dead, it'll be a dead class tomorrow now. <laughs> All I know is, like, I just hear you talking about waking up at four in the morning to work out, and I'm like, who are you? Like, what planet are you from? Just be glad you don't live close, because I, I would make you come. <laughs> it's, it's something you have to experience. And it, I, uh, I mean, I don't know if I'll continue to do it after this month of dedication that I have to do it. Um, but the, just like that group workout, like, I don't usually work out in groups, and I work out at least five days a week. But working out, I don't know, something about working out with, like, just people of all skill level is, is like, inspiring. And I think, you know, tie that back into, like, that woodworking, like, dude, YouTube is so awesome because you get to see people, like, just growing, like, just starting out in their venture into woodworking and seeing, like, going back to, you know, like, just that very beginning and then going to people and seeing somebody that's been on there for years and years and years um and seeing like where they're at and like there's just always that mix you know so what a great society we live in right now because (laughs) i can remember when i had aol dial up (laughs) and then you couldn't use the phone and the computer at the same time (laughs) like i i've been calling for an hour and it was busy oh yeah my son was on on the internet that's on the internet whatever the internet is my aol screen names were so embarrassing oh yeah do you remember them yeah, okay, what? so one my first one was Punch Buggy 1122 because I was, like, obsessed with Volkswagen Beetles. <laughs> Mind you, I was in, like, fifth grade. I couldn't even drive. I don't know why I liked them so much. Because you and got then, to punch people. Yeah, and then the other one I had was – I had one that was, like, barbecue shrimp, like, BBQ shrimp because I was always called, like, shrimp because I was super short. <laughs> well, I still am <laughs> super short, but – Man, like just thinking back to old AIM names, I'm like, why was anybody friends with me? <laughs> That's the problem is you always want to be friends with the people that had the weirdest names. <laughs> so, all right, well, let's, uh, let's move on. Let's talk about some products. Sam, what's something that you would like to recommend this week? So um, the company, the company DAP, they 
are like leading brands in like caulking and and home improvement stuff. They just came out with this this glue called Rapid Fuse, well, an adhesive called Rapid Fuse, and they have two brands that they just came out with. One is um, just for wood purposing, so um, adhering wood to wood or fabric to wood, metal to wood, whatever. And then they have another one that's more of like a general purpose adhesive. Um, and I've been using it a lot. It cures and well, it, it pretty much sticks within like 30 seconds and then cures within 30 minutes. So, um, it's been really fun to work with. It's sandable, it's paintable. Um, so that's what I'm recommending this week because I, I use it on my desk build. I I've used it on a few projects so far. My dad restores vintage cars. So he just used it to, uh, put some fabric on his old vintage car and he loved it. So definitely check it out. I will, um, because I'm almost out of glue. Like, I'm <laughs> going to have to go buy some more even to finish the current project. What, what are you looking at, Drew? Well, my my daughter is uh, not exactly happy that I haven't come to say goodnight to her yet. So um, yeah. I'll go last. <laughs> okay. You, you, go, you, you go say goodnight to her. I'll, I'll go say goodnight. I'll be, I'll be back. Yeah, we'll, we'll, no. kill, we'll kill time. She's, she's We're important. We're going to talk about you while you're gone. Hey, that ain't fair. <laughs> I can listen to it later. That's all right. I, uh, I'm trying to get on my iPad because it blocked out. Every <laughs> single device I have, I have a different password on, and I don't know why. Okay, wait. Can I tell you an app? Yeah. I just learned about this app called Keeper. Hey, I have that app. Yeah, so why don't you use it? Because it's the I have to be able to get into the device to use it. It's that four-digit oh, password at the phone. Like I don't. So I, put so, it in your phone. Okay. Okay. I, so let me just explain what Keeper is. So people are like, "What are they talking about?" <laughs> Keeper is an app, and you store all your passwords in it, and it encrypts your passwords. So if like someone tries to break into it, they can't see your passwords. And the only thing that you have to remember is one password to get into the actual app. Or if you have an iPod, you can use, or your iPhone, you can use uh, the fingerprint technology. But it's pretty awesome because it stores all of your passwords. So. What I'm saying is, why don't you keep it on your phone? Because you use your phone every day and then put your passwords in it. Okay, so now my problem is <clears throat> all my devices, like my iPad and my iPhone, are locked with the, you know, the little four-digit password to get into it. Mm -hmm. And my iPad's just old enough that it doesn't have the fingerprint, the touch ID on it. And I updated, so that it used to be the same password, the phone and the iPad. I updated the my phone, so I could, I don't even remember why I updated it. It was to remember a four digit code for something else. And I never updated my iPad. And now I have a trouble remembering the one that's for my iPad. And, and yet I don't go in and change it. I so, mean, call Apple, they can figure it out. They're smart. <laughs> well, then they want to charge you for everything. That's true too. I mean, I, I remember it. It's just after I put in the code like five times, I'm like, what is wrong? I'm like, oh yeah, it's this other one. Let me, let me. We do this other one. So wait, so this picture that you put on Instagram is did it like really, the, did it the really? most flattering face I've ever made. Everybody go check it out and make fun of me. <laughs> well, hopefully they've seen it by now. <laughs> <laughs> so all right. Well, the uh, project I'm gonna recommend is the Blue Yeti USB microphone. So even after Drew and I talked about USB microphones, I decided not to go with the blue Nessie. So I'd go with the blue Yeti. So much that I recommend it that I'm not even using it right now. <laughs> now, um, the good reason why I'm not using it right now is because I, I really want to spend some time on it, recording some things, and not doing something that I record it, and then I go back and audio screwed up. It's not like we're, we can go back and re-record this episode and have the same outcome. You know, every time we were going to talk, it's going to have a different outcome. Wait, what do you mean? You didn't memorize your lines? I memorized everything. <laughs> yeah, I've got a script too. I don't know what you're going by. I, look, I don't get paid enough to to uh, have a script. So that that 75 cents that I got paid, that you paid me, Drew, it's to, to... It was 50. To go... Oh. <laughs> to make I don't know where that, you got that extra quarter from. Uh, I think I took it out of my son's piggy bank. <laughs> <laughs> rude <laughs> look that kid's got a piggy bank like i wish i got that much money when i was his age he delays his wife's presence and then he steals from his kids yeah so. right we talked about this last time is because when we were younger we did free labor we can't complain about it it, it oh, made yeah, us true. characters <laughs> yeah but hey, look I, he didn't get allowance but for like christmas like so 
we opened him up account a year ago. So he was four years old, almost four years old. No, almost five, almost five years old, I think. He had like four hundred dollars in his piggy bank. Good for him. Yeah. Now, <laughs> Bad for you. <laughs> I know. I'm like, man, pizza tonight's on you, huh, son? And he's like, no. <laughs> and he knows. He knows he's got a lot of money. And I'm like, you want to buy that toy for you? No. No. <laughs> you can buy it for me, Dad. <laughs> I don't that's see how, how I save fair. my money. Yeah, exactly. Gets everybody else to spend what he wants. Sam, so. this is a really good picture, I must say. Because I, 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 I miss the face. I look I so good. Screen. <laughs> like this is my new headshot, so just be ready for it when I change the picture on my blog. <laughs> hey, that's the way to go. I mean, I, I, I fair warned. You asked for a funny face. I told you it's going on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, I mean, come on, why not? So, but no. So, like, I'm gonna. I recommend the microphone, and it comes in this awesome box with like a bunch of Yetis, and it comes with the definition <laughs> of a Yeti on the box. And that's amazing. It's a. Uh, I, I mean, I really like the microphone. And like I said, the only reason I'm not using it right now is because I want to spend some hours um, on it and make sure that it's producing um, adequate audio. The only downfall, like I told you, Drew, is it doesn't come with a pop filter mm-hmm. for your explosives. Um, so I'm going to have to spend the extra 50 bucks now and buy it. The I mean, just because I'm OCD like that, I have to buy the one from Blue made for the Yeti. I can't just buy a cheap generic one. It's got to be the same color too. Uh, it is the same color. It's silver. <laughs> so, well, it's funny that you brought up the ne- the uh, the Nessie and Yeti because my uh, Nessie stopped working. Actually, it it works. It lights up, but it doesn't register in my computer. Uh, and I think the U- USB, the micro USB cable that it goes to is, uh, I think it's broken, kind of, because it's not wanting to pop up on the on the screen at all, and all the. Uh, uh, background investigative work that I've done to figure out why it's doing it. It's, that's pretty much what I've come up with. So um, I, I like the the Yeti mainly because you can mount it to a uh, like a, a boom arm. Yeah. So uh, you can't do that with an Nessie. No, and I like this one because it is upgradable to um, XLR as well. So <clears throat> at some point when I get fancy enough and ooh, I switch – our whole audio system over to um, to like a, a mixer, like a mini mixer. I can convert this microphone into an XLR mount microphone instead of a USB. Um, and then the fact that you know it's it because the Nessie only comes with the one uh, polar pattern, right? It's it's only I think it's the the carteroid pattern that speaks right in front. The Yeti mm-hmm. comes with four. Um, flip over here on the box so it comes with a stereo which is like good for vocals and instruments but then you know like what hopefully we're gonna do on the next show with you drew it has a bi-directional so somebody sitting in front and in back of it it will pick up their voices equally um so that you know if you're gonna like do a live show um where you're only have one microphone um and and you're gonna do an interview with somebody in person um, it's good for that. And then it's got om- omnidirectional, which picks up equal noise from 360. And then your uh, card card I'm guessing. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm Texan. So. We're, we're getting technical here. But anyway, like that picks up just right in front. And that's what that Nessie does. That's why I really went with this because it it will carry me on longer than a, you know a shorter period of time. So you should go pick one up. Uh, I'll I'll do that when I get some extra money. You need to go get one too. <laughs> Both of you. <laughs> okay, okay. That's that, we've got a we got a job to do now, Sam. Uh, it's getting I mean, intense. I'm getting I mean, finger pointed. I at. mean, look, we don't <laughs> we don't pay very well, so don't bake on on what what we what we pay there, Sam. Yeah, yeah. Well, you heard. I paid. I paid him fifty cents. I'm still waiting <laughs> on on my paycheck. <laughs> I, Wait well, on my guest paycheck. <laughs> well, well, you spent it on coffee, so there you go. Yeah, I spent half my salary on coffee. <laughs> yeah. Well, the product I am going to recommend is um, something that is—it's very simple, um, but it's also very handy. 
and it's the brass setup or height gauge bars. Uh, you've seen me use those on my videos several times uh, to set the height of my blade, the router bits, um, even doing spacer work with my half laps. Uh, there's, there's a couple of many uses, a couple of many uses, that's really good grammar. Uh, it has a lot of uses uh, that are out of the ordinary, such as the, using them as spacers. Um, and, and by the way, somebody did mention that if you didn't have these brass bars for the half lap stuff, you can use an eighth inch uh, drill bit because it's the same thing. Uh, but these things are machined to an exact thickness. Uh, now, I'm sure it's within certain tolerances, but it's really, really small. Uh, but you have measurements of like three quarter um, Three eighths, uh, one quarter, one eighth, and I did I say three eighths? I think three eighths is in there too. Three quartered, half, three eighths, eighth, and sometimes you can get even a little bit smaller than that because uh, some of these saw blades are are a thin curve, and you can get the twenty. I think it's twenty three thirty seconds yeah. as well. So. Uh, those are a little bit more expensive to get those, but the, the basic setup that like I have is roughly about 20 bucks. Um, but I have used them. I don't, I don't know how many times, uh, just to do basic woodworking. So, uh, that is the product I'm recommending. Yeah. Just, I mean, even if you don't go with those brass setup bars, like I have them, um, fast cap mag, Strips mag, or the mag shims. Yeah, that thing. Yeah. They're they're pretty good as well. Um, I I like the fact that they're magnetic, and I just throw them on the side of my table saw. Um, however, they're not as universal, in my opinion, as those brass bars, and that's why I've been really looking at um, getting getting the brass bars because they're a little more universal mm -hmm. um, for for using different applications. I've also been looking at um, the Craig setup bars that they have, um, but again, they're more shaped like the mag shims, so they're not as universal. So, I uh, well, I left you a link. You can you can click on, on this link right here. Yeah, that link right there. Okay, I'll, I'll click on it. I'll, I'll get some. <laughs> so, all right. Well. Uh, if you guys would like to support the show, you've already heard like we have expensive coffee coffee habits, and I can't even <laughs> speak. I need speech lessons now. Uh, you can head over to www.woodshop101.com forward slash listen and find today's uh, show notes, or you can go to any episode show notes. And at the very bottom, there'll be a couple different links for one-time donations. They're uh, small one-time donations. We'd appreciate anything. Um, it helps us continue to uh, to to record the podcast, and it pays for hosting fees and stuff. And if you can't do that, we would really like you to go over to iTunes and leave us a five star rating because that helps us grow the audience. And growing the audience is why we're here. So Sam, you need to go to iTunes, leave a rating. <laughs> <laughs> we we both have. Yeah, we've already left our own ratings. I mean, yeah, I have too. Oh yeah, I, I it, it must it must be waiting approval because I'm <laughs> I looked at iTunes to see if we had any new comments on there and I, I didn't see any new comments. So. Isn't that cheating? Well, I'll use all my fake accounts I make. Oh all yeah, all my yeah. fake accounts I use for Instagram I'll make and I'll just make a five star rating. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> he missed my my rating too, so don't don't feel so bad. <laughs> Look, I forgot I had one until you read mine too. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty so. good. All right. Well, uh, Sam, you want to give us your contact info again? Yes. So you can either email me at hello at DIYHuntress.com or you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at DIYHuntress. Or if you can't remember any of that, you can go to my website, DIYHuntress.com, and all of my info is there too. Yeah, I like the latter version. I can't remember all that. <laughs> it's just I'm easier not... to go to the website and click on some icons and gets gets you somewhere. So I'm not even sure I remember the website now. <laughs> we'll good paste thing, it to your thing, forehead. I got it right here in the show notes, so I can just, <laughs> just click right there. <laughs> well, if you need to get a hold of me in particular, you can go to rhwoodshop.com and there you'll find a contact section. Right now, my website is under 
some maintenance. I hope it's done by now. It's been going on for a couple days, but uh, my contact information will have all of my email, social media, uh, or there's just even a, a contact form that you can um, fill out there as well. So, uh, Jeremy, what about yourself? Uh, you can find me at countrysideworkshop.com. Uh, there, there's links for Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, all those things. Um, if you want to find me more specifically, I'm, I'm pretty active on Facebook. I'm really trying to de- dedicate more time to Instagram. So go over there, look at Countryside Workshop. Um, I'm trying to gain the followers over there. To me, it's just uh, a little simpler to uh, follow people over there. I just look at some pictures um, versus getting caught up in everybody's just personal drama on Facebook. So, <laughs> As Sam said, there's plenty of drama. There's it's, drama it's, it's, there's it's, drama everywhere. But it's choose it's how you choose to follow it. And Facebook <laughs> forces you to have a personal account in order to have a business page. Yeah, I hate that. And so I hate that. So when I go in to look at my business page, I see mm. all these everybody News else's feed. personal stuff. So I got I'm like, oh well, let me look through that real quick. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, let's let's get out of that. I don't want to see that no more. So I get to where now, like, I really don't get on Facebook unless I have like notifications, which happen a lot. So I get on <laughs> notifications. I'm like, crap. Now I'm stuck in like so and so's birthday that I hadn't talked to in 20 years. But I have to say happy birthday. That's the OCD. Like, let me let me spend five seconds doing that ten <laughs> times today. So remind me not to send you anything through Facebook now. Well, look, I respond. It just <laughs> I don't want to get caught up doing it delays stuff. the rest of my day. Find me I'm on gonna Instagram. I'm going to add you on Facebook. I'm going to add you on Facebook and change my birthday to every day of the year, so you're obligated to <laughs> show you happy birthday day. that many times. <laughs> okay, Dude, well, he's a tormentor. Happy birthday <laughs> now for the next 365 days. <laughs> I, I got you early for the next 365 days. <laughs> oh, that's good. So. All right, well, well, if you uh, need to get a hold of uh, any one of us in particular, like we had all of that right there, but you can also find us on the Woodshop 101 website, which is uh, www.woodshop101podcast.com slash listen, as uh, mentioned before. There you're also going to find all the episodes that you can stream on any device. Uh, and you can also find us on Facebook, Instagram. Now, be sure and go to Instagram. That is fairly new, and we would like to develop a following there because it's just it's just more fun to to uh, interact that way, see pictures of behind the scenes. So head over there to uh, to find us as well and ask questions. Um, we are also on Twitter, which Jeremy doesn't like to use, but uh, I will check it from time to time as well. Um, and other than that. Uh, that's that's pretty much it. It's it's really easy to get a hold of at least one of us. If you want to get a hold of the other, we can definitely relay that message. Also, we have a voicemail that you can call either through Skype or through this phone number of 409-234-3959. And as you can tell, we really love getting voicemails. It's it's really cool. And Sam just got all kinds of inspired. <laughs> uh, but once again, that number was 409-234-3959. Be sure and leave us a voicemail. We'll air it on the show and if you have a question we will be happy to answer it so guys uh that was a pretty good show i like it i think so yeah sam i, th- I think you're going to get some more warm reviews while jeremy and i are left out in the cold well Sorry, i don't guys. know we'll probably get reviews there's not enough woodworking there's too much personal talk you know what <laughs> i'm i'm sorry but if if this is our personality if you don't like it there's an unsubscribe button over there <laughs> there you go don't like it just listen to something else yes but uh, I, I think that's it. Uh, we appreciate you having, ha- we appreciate you coming on with us again. It was, it was rather fun. Yeah, this is awesome. Thank you guys so much. Uh, like I said, had fun last time and had fun this time. So do it again soon. All right. Yeah. Well, from Jeremy, Sam, and myself, be safe in your shops. And we hope to talk to you again on the next episode. One, two, three. Boom. Boom. Oh, all right. He's the luxury. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about what's going on in the shop, Drew. What's uh, what do you got going on right there? I uh, I'm actually, I got to see. It. Is it right there on the table? Let me see it. Yeah, it is. Uh, I had to bring it over, but it's the half lap picture frame. I'm finishing up on it tonight. I just got lacquer on it today and some of last night. But uh, 
I basically showed that technique on how to make the half laps, only this time I added a little bit of uh, something extra on where you don't have to measure at all. There is no calipers, there's no height gauges, there's nothing. It's, it is completely 100% no measuring. That looks complex. Why would you decide to do that? Because <laughs> he's a complex woodworker. <laughs> <laughs> no, that actually looks pretty good. I, I totally, when you were talking about frames for the last like month, that is not what I had in mind. <laughs> like, I don't know what, what I had in mind, but that wasn't it. And when I saw it, I was like, man, that actually looks really good. Say, yeah, go, I, I've go made it before me though. What's that? I've made it before though. This, this half lap joint, uh, I actually made a picture frame from one of my daughter's pictures, uh, after she got out of, uh, school last year. And I um, ended up making one and, and featured the half lap technique. Only I've, I kind of perfected it a little bit since then. But uh, it's funny though. I mean, the videos that I shot last year, nobody knows about. <laughs> so well, look, it, it better and, be simple because I'm actually going to do half laps on an upcoming project. Oh yeah, that the technique that I that I uh, have been using to make half laps, and it doesn't matter what I'm doing it on. Different thicknesses or different uh, widths. I mean, it, it works every time, and and it's super super simple. Yeah, that's for somebody that's got a, a sled. I'm gonna try to do it with my miter gauge and my fence. Do you have two miter gauges? No, I do. But believe it or not, the one that came with my saw is way too loose in the miter gauge or in the miter slot. Like you put it in, and it wiggles way too much in that slot. Never will be accurate. You could probably still get away with it though, because what I do is I bridge the two with a uh, piece of wood and screw them in together. Mm. So it's kind of like a cross-cut sled in itself. Yay. I like that. Yeah, because it literally has been useless. <laughs> like, when I, I first used it, I was like, just trash this. <laughs> I, went, I went to Craig and I bought their, my, their precision miter gauge. And it's been a lifesaver. Yeah, I did the little two, the two miter gauges screwed together with a bridge at Rockler. And uh, one of the guys that works there came up and he said, whose idea was it to do that? And I said, that's mine. I've been doing that when I didn't have a crosscut sled handy. And he's like, I don't know why I didn't think of that. I, I was sitting over here hitting my head just going, duh. <laughs> just, Yo, that's so. pretty genius. And I, yeah, I do have two. Hopefully it'll work. Yeah. I've really thought about like breaking the aluminum bar off of it and just putting a new bar on there. Hey, uh, Rockler makes a good bar. <laughs> hey, call Rockland and tell him to send me one. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm actually gonna miss. Like that was one of the first things when I decided I was moving. Like I was like, all right, I got a Rockler store 20 minutes from me. Let me see if I got one where I'm moving. No Rockler, no Woodcraft. I don't know how. Like I literally, I get in the car in 20 minutes. I'll be at Rockler or Woodcraft, and I don't know what I'm gonna do now. I mean, I guess well, not spend near as much money. I, yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have one near me, so the closest one is Arlington, where we went uh, oh, a while back, where April and I went. But yeah, uh, I've got a woodcraft, but that would be a faux pas for me to walk into a woodcraft now. So, hey, but they do sell some different things. Yeah. yeah. Um. Don't predict before August because <laughs> it won't happen. <laughs> I say Christmas time. Okay, so you're saying it'll actually be done before I'm saying it will be done. Yeah. I, I'm I'm gonna go out on a limb and I'm gonna say Christmas time. I'm, I'm, and uh and this is just me showing faith that I have no idea why because you haven't proved anything to me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh I, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say cr- Christmas time or New Year's. New I'm, Year's at the latest. I'm hoping Christmas time because I going into a new job, I don't think I'll be able to take vacation this year and come all the way back home and spend it uh with family. So it'll be just me and the wife and kids. So hopefully she'll have a dining room table. By the way, the one thing I forgot to leave out, Sam, is this was my wife's birthday present from November of 2015. (laughs) (laughs) That just dawned on me. That just dawned on me. This poor woman. (laughs) Yeah. He this, never gave her a timeline. He just said, would do it. That, that's true. And he was it like, started. I'm giving you a birthday present, but I forgot to tell you there's like an asterisk, and it's going to be actually three <laughs> years from now. So it's got some conditions. Yeah, I still <laughs> forgot that it was her birthday present until literally just now. <laughs> I hope she doesn't listen to these. 
<laughs> I so hope she doesn't listen. I apologize for you if she's listening because <laughs> maybe it's on. good. Maybe, maybe it's good we got a, a female's point of view on here just to show how how really cruel and insensitive that was. <laughs> maybe, maybe I'd actually need to get it complete then. <laughs> so. You know, your your stories kind of remind me. I'm going to tell this this real quick story and then we'll start our topic. But my <laughs> my dad told me this story. Said when he was in the army, uh, he was he was in a tent and his watch stopped working. So he he got a harebrained idea that he was going to try and fix it. And this this is kind of revolving around your sofa table. But anyway, he sat down at a table, had a, had his light there so he could see, and he started taking this watch apart. And all the the people that are in the tent started coming over and looking, and was real intrigued by what he was doing because you know Dad just he never let on that he could fix watches. And he said he'd be working on it, and then the spring would pop out, and he he'd pay no attention to it. He'd just keep working, and then a gear would fly out over here, and he'd keep working. And everybody was just really, really enthralled. And then by the time he had it all apart, all the pieces were ready to go so he could fix his watch and assemble it, he took his trash can, put it up next to the table and his arm, and scooted everything into the trash can. <laughs> <laughs> Look, that's, that's a man after my own heart right there. He, he said everybody in that tent was pissed. <laughs> yeah, everybody else had, had time invested. So let me apologize yeah. to the listeners. You had your time invested in this sofa table that nobody will ever see. <laughs> <laughs> ever ever I mean, yeah i mean you'll see parts of it on instagram and facebook but you'll never see it complete he'll take pictures of the the, the dumpster he put in <laughs> yeah okay you know what when i go to work tomorrow i'll do that because it's down by work <laughs> like the before and after you take a picture of like what it was before but then the after is just the dumpster <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You're, oh, you're gonna, gonna, you're gonna see a drink. picture of the dumpster floating out sometime this week, so you better stay tuned. <laughs> like, remember that fancy. big project I was working on? Here's a picture of it, dumpster. <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> so, all right, well, uh, let's let's get into our topic, Drew. Well, um, the topic that uh, we are going into this kind of happened uh, from a viewer of mine, and it was just inadvertent, and. Uh, Nothing against what he asked me, um, but it really kind of st- kind of stuck with me, and it's mainly um, about. Paid. It's got to get done to get paid. So, <laughs> um, it in fact. So I'm gonna I'll be partnering with Transtent because the um, inlay will be actually dyed epoxy, um, and Transtent sent me uh, their dye to to dye it with. So. I don't. I don't know yet. I'm. I'm. Uh, I'm a little intimidated by it. I guess because I've not done a whole lot of inlay work, and this is actually going to be inlaid on a finished piece. So if I mess up that, then I got to go back and like rethink entire strategy because I'm using every bit of the last character maple I have in my shop, and I'm not to to find character maple. Not many people keep on a regular basis. And in fact, I got my my stock from Rockwood probably six months ago or longer. So, well, I'm going to forewarn you now that when you're done with it, it cannot repeat, cannot go in the recycle bin. <laughs> no, because I remember I remember this long drawn out process of a sofa table hey. that I was just dying to see. And the dude didn't even take pictures of it because he <laughs> threw it away. Yeah, oh, I told no. you, look, if, if it doesn't turn out, ain't nobody going to see it. If I don't <laughs> like it, nobody's going to see it, which I could have, I mean, I, I mean, it's that's rabbit hole to always get down, but like I can, no project's too far that you can't fix it. But I just had too much invested and I was tired of it. I had that, I had no motivation to fix it. And so cut my losses with it. Let me. Don't I don't want to burn out on that one project. I want to go and and get into something that I've been wanting to get into. Well, like, a, me, di- like a dining room table. <laughs> I think I've now convinced myself to move the unfinished dining room table so I can finish it for my first project when I move. So we'll actually have a real dining room table. Um, you know, I just hear I just hear words <laughs> right now. Just words. I know. It's, look, at least sounds I'm like you actually, two have trust issues. I don't know. I feel like I'm a third wheel right now. I don't know what's happening. Well, if you go back to the first episode, February third of two thousand and fifteen, I will have talked about starting this 
uh, both the sofa table and the dining room table. So our very first episode, and here we that are, our, episode thirty three, a a little over a year old, and I've yet to complete. Well, I completed one. It just <laughs> and it went to the garbage. Yeah. <laughs> and the other one's yet to be completed. Um, and I, but see, I, I've been back and forth because I've, you know, it's done a lot of work, put a lot of work into that table base, but I didn't want to move an unfinished project. So then I was like, all right, well, I'll try to finish it before I move it. Well, then the chances of it being damaged once I get it from the, from the movers is, I'm going to say about 99%, it's going to be damaged. So why damage a finished table? At least if I move the half-finished table, it's easier to repair. Okay, wait, so we're on episode 33. <laughs> episode 33. The dining so room table I'm is gonna, going... We should place bets. We should have, like, a listener bet. Where, like, we have, like, a pool of people, and they bet what episode you're going to say you finished <laughs> I don't know. I, I can tell you time frames. Oh, I love it. I love by, it. By January 1 of 2017, the dining room table will be complete. Okay, I say by March of 2017. That's a year from today. And if I win, you better send me something freaking cool because... <laughs> okay. Because um, I know I'm right. <laughs> it'll be a surprise box. Drew, what, what a... Yeah, it'll be a surprise box. Surprise box. Okay, so what's your, what's your prediction? But, no, but I, I, I'm affiliated. There's, there's way more, like, to me, there's more stuff at... At Rockler, but our woodcraft carries more like hardwood. Um, They're just really proud of it. Yeah, I uh, I, t- I try not to go to either because that would involve me going to Houston, and I don't like to deal with the people up in Houston. Mm-hmm. So uh, I-, I order all my stuff, and then I'm like, "Well, crap! What I spent in shipping, I could have just drove up there, taking the time." <laughs> <laughs> so, what about you, Sam? What you got going on? <clears throat> well, um, I just finished my desk build, so I uh, uploaded that today, which was cool. So right now, I don't really have anything going on, which is like so crazy to say because I always have something going on. Um, but what I do have coming up is I'm doing a kind of like a DIY swap with another blogger. I'll be announcing it pretty soon. But we uh, sent each other some surprise items and have challenged ourselves to uh, make something cool out of the surprise box. So it should be kind of cool. I'm really excited for that. And uh, I have no idea what I'm going to do yet, but uh, <laughs> but uh, I'll figure it out. So you have no idea what she's sending you? Well, I just got her box. And she oh, sent you just me did? Some, okay. She sent me some pretty cool stuff, definitely stuff I've never worked with before. Um, I don't know if she got my box yet, and I'm... Uh, I'm kind of scared because I sent her a lot of weird stuff. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I hope Drew, I'm going to send you a surprise box. She's able to make something cool out of it, but I'm sure she will. She's really creative. <laughs> I'm, oh, I'm that's send you a surprise box, Drew. Uh, I well, it better be for woodworking. I don't. I don't want to see anything so, else. Hey, whatever it is, you got to include <laughs> on your channel. That's, that's all that matters. <laughs> <laughs> Have a woodshop 101 surprise challenge. Yeah, like uh. Like I, I'm pretty sure we got to hit explicit on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Little kids can't watch that. Yeah. This is rated R. <laughs> so yeah, um, I've been working on the memory box for Bruso, um, and I like I was telling y'all earlier, like I'm only maybe maybe a quarter of the way done, and I spent all day Sunday recording it, and I I decided to go with some character maple and if you know anything about character maple it's got a lot of like mineral streaks in it there's um generally a lot more knots things like that and so there's a lot of things i ended up having to fill with epoxy and then i was like well ah man that's a great video so i started shooting a second video while shooting the first video and by by the time this project is done there will be three videos coming out of the one um (laughs) And there will be, so there'll be the actual box build and then there's going to be a uh, clip taken out of that. That's going to be like a concentration, more in depth on how to fill a knot with epoxy. Um, and then I'm thinking that I'm going to do like a, an epoxy inlay on the lid. Um, and if I do that, that will be a completely separate video um, because that alone will probably be, you know, at least a 10 to 15 minute video just on doing the inlay 
because I think how I do it, I'm, I'm not going to do router based. I'm going to do it all, all by hand, chisel and router plane. I'm thinking. That's... I think the epoxy video is going to be cool because there's like this whole thing. I don't know if you guys have seen on Instagram where people are doing like the live edge wood and like joining with like an epoxy river in the middle. Mm-hmm. And it's like, mm-hmm. there's a lot of cool stuff you could do with epoxy and wood. So like, I'm really interested. I can't wait for that video to come up. Like, hurry up, let's go. Yeah. In fact, so <laughs> you forget who you're talking so, to. Yeah. <laughs> well, this one's, it, it's going to happen. Cause uh, I mean, I'm waiting to get paid. Welcome to Woodshop 101, a woodworking audio podcast geared toward the hobby weekend woodworker. Your hosts for the show are Jeremy Crawford and Drew Shore. Join these two different craftsmen for a lighthearted banter about everything woodworking, online education, and how they produce content. Topics could include the latest news, tips, tricks, and designs to include furniture, crafts, and shop projects. Welcome to episode number 33. Today we're going to talk about which woodworking path we take whether it be the simple path or the complex path. We are joined tonight for a repeat visit from Sam Raimondi, the DIY Huntress. What's going on, Sam? Not much. Glad you guys weren't sick of me yet from the last podcast. Hey. Happy to be back. I mean, look, it's you're setting records. Setting <laughs> records. That's all that well, matters. We had to take some ibuprofen and stuff just to get over the last time. But, you know, <laughs> we, we finally got over it, and we're good. <laughs> I mean, that's no different than the Tums I take every time I, I get on here with Drew, so. Uh. <laughs> Is that a Five Guys cup right there? No, 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 no. That's a Del Rancho. Oh, well, it looks like a Five Guys cup. I'm drinking coffee. Is it too late for coffee? Me too, Starbucks. Never too late for coffee. Mine's like the corner store down, <laughs> down that's 75 <laughs> cents for a cup. I'm in New York. There's a Starbucks in every corner, so. And look, I don't know what part of New York, but where I was at, there was no Starbucks. It was corner stores. <laughs> it. Apparently, you were in the wrong part of New York. No, I was in the good part because literally for like a year and a half, the same corner store we'd go get breakfast, lunch, got me hooked on seven monsters a day. <laughs> and after like a year, a year and a half, like I, I had to quit cold turkey and I had the shakes from like drinking that many monsters. That's the worst part about living in New York is you have the corner stores and they're so convenient for everything. That's why they're so called easy. convenience stores. Oh no, they're, they're <laughs> corner stores there. No, it's I don't I can't I don't even know where there was the Starbucks at when I lived there. It doesn't matter because this this one cup of coffee co- is like half of what I make in a year. So oh yeah, <laughs> you don't drink it. <laughs> that that cup's actually been sitting on her desk for about six months. She <laughs> sips it. Stop giving away my secrets. <laughs> Put it in the microwave. Heat it up again later. <laughs> well, look, hey, I bought a Starbucks cup, one of their dollar plastic cups, and I could refill it. And I'm like, yeah, I went to Starbucks today. <laughs> but no, I. So my coffee pot broke, I think, right after I got back in town from Christmas. So about three months, I haven't had a coffee pot. So I go to the corner store and spend 75 cents on a cup of coffee. Yeah, after 75 about, cents is that's doable. I, I quit coffee, though, for an entire year. I stopped drinking it. Uh, cause I was drinking like four cups a day and I was like, I don't think this is good for me. And so I quit for a whole year and now that I'm drinking coffee again, I'm like, why did I ever quit for a year? That was like the worst year ever. <laughs> well, this, I had a Keurig and I was like, all right, I don't, I don't want to buy another one because the one I had, and I don't know if they're still like this, but the internal tank, you couldn't drain once it was primed. You couldn't ever drain it. Mm-hmm. Well, then when I move, the movers won't take it cause they won't take anything that has liquid in it. So then it's up to me to move it, but then it spills everywhere. So I was like, I'm just not going to buy another one. I was like, I'll buy one once I move and I don't have to worry about it. And I was like, you know, I'll just, I'll survive it on coffee when I go to work at home. I won't worry about it. And now I'm like three months into it. And I'm like, nah, I'm I'm going to the corner store every morning when I get up. And I'm like 75 cents after like a hundred cups, hundred visits. I've could, I could have easily gone and bought me another curate. Like, (laughs) <laughs> just, just don't do the math like it isn't worth it to do the math no. you start feeling bad about how much money you spend on coffee and coffee's way too important for that exactly 